Okay, <clears throat> here's the result of just the raw data that I got from the resistive testing run. Uh, it's not listed in order of time like some of the other stuffs I've shown. All it is is the raw data, each data entry, which was about 40,000 represented in this graph, that captures the current in red, which is amps, the voltage in blue, which is volts, panel voltage, and then the related power, which is basically just volts times amps. So this is all the data from the whole day, and it doesn't, there's really actually doesn't matter whether the sun hit the panel in the morning, noon, or afternoon, doesn't matter. But <clears throat> some of the points that we talked about in the characteristic curve that we should be able to see on this chart are listed. So it's kind of fun to notice those. The open circuit voltage, there was when I had nothing, no, uh, none of the resistors tied in, so there was no load on the panel. The voltmeter from the watts view was measuring the open circuit voltage, which we know is stated as was in the around the 22 is what's specced on the on the panel, and that's exactly what it was me reading. <coughs> on the other extreme where I had a very heavy load. I never did short it out, but I had like a one ohm resistor and it got slightly over five amps measured on a number of data points. And that's the equivalent of the short circuit current that is listed on the spec sheet for the panel. Then <clears throat> if we look at the power curve, the, this is the actual power results. You can see there is a peak to it a maximum power point that was achieved and there's a corresponding range of voltages right in that range that was specced for the panel and the corresponding current for it. So you can tell just running this resistive test I was able to plot it out and capture a number of things that are talked about on the spec for the particular panel. Now if I take the exact same data but have one of the axes be voltage and the other be current and then the second vertical axis be power we notice some new things that we couldn't see before. The one that sticks out to me was there's a line of current here going from 1 amp to 5 and a corresponding power uh, number that corresponds to the right axis over here where the power out is lower on the curve than the graphing of the current. In the middle here you see kind of the normal where I was collecting most of the data. The current was in a nice linear climb from all the data points and again doesn't mean it's by time but during the day where it was seeing these particular currents and I had a stable set of resistors attached for hours on end it generated a very consistent profile for what the power output was that. So these two the blue and the red in the center here are are basically one series of uh, one basic one set of resistors. This was uh, some data that we took when we were doing some modifications and obviously it was high amperage meaning I must have had just the two ohm resistor on there and you can tell trying to draw a lot of or a lot of amps out of it actually caused the total power that was uh, produced to be less so it was stressing the panel. On the other side, <clears throat> as you notice, there's two more clusters of data points. This is where the current was lower, light loading, maybe when I had the 4 ohm resistor attached, or maybe the 4 and a quarter. So lightly loaded, and you could see that the power was actually, uh, it was 
still lower than the best part of the day when I had the normal load, whatever that happened to have been. And I need to probably redo this to find out exactly where the optimum is. Not that you have a whole lot of control over that, but it does show that in this case over here where I tried to pull a lot of amps out of the panel by having a small resistor, I got the amps, but the total watts was less. Here, I put less resistance on it, so the, lo the load was less. Uh, the voltage was higher, but the output power was less. So the complete opposite of this. And so, kind of interesting to see that relationship. Now taking that exact same data from that curve and just doing some filtering on it to get rid of some of the noise, I'm able to generate a characteristic curve, which is panel voltage to, to watts. So I could technically, I could go out and if my panel is reading 10 volts, I, have, I will know that the current that's being uh, developed is or, you know, represented by this curve and the power out will be represented by that curve. So I can just use with my voltmeter, for instance, when I get to 12 volts, I know that the power out will be around 33 watts and that the amps off the panel will be around 2.8 watts. So that's the idea of generating the characteristic curve. Here's a more traditional way, just looking at just the voltage of the panel to generate an idea of what the panel output power is. So as I mentioned before, if I just go measure the panel and it's at 12 volts, I can be pretty assured that I'm generating 33 watts of power, and so on and so forth. And reaching up to that 70 watts or so that I was able to achieve in this test. Now on another day, I might be able to get a little bit higher voltage and see closer to that 80 watts. But as I mentioned, I'd have to have factory level uh, test conditions and I'd have to have basically a brand new panel. Panels will degrade over time. They won't necessarily ever put out what they put out when they were first uh, produced. So that's the result of my testing. If you have any questions, let me know.